I'm just gonna come straight out and say it. Not only am I not surprised in the least to hear that the Apple Vision Pro is not selling particularly well, has not sold particularly well, and that production might be ramping down, I'll go a step further and say that Google, over a decade ago with Google Glass, had it right. For those who don't remember, over a decade ago, Google had this product called Google Glass, and it was extremely expensive as well. It was like $1,500, but it was a very different product versus what you have with the Apple Vision Pro. This was a device that you would wear on your face, but you could still easily see the world around you. And no, I don't mean through a camera. You could just look through it. There was this little display, if you want to call it that, that was in your field of vision, and it acted as a heads-up display. And it could do all sorts of interesting things, from giving you notifications to giving you directions to where you are going. You could say the hot phrase of, okay, blank glass and it would wake up and you could talk to it just like an Android smartphone and you could interact with it through that. You could take photos and videos. Again, it was $1,500, but this was over 10 years ago. Of course, in the last few years, we've begun to see similar products, right? Ray-Ban has something. Meta is working with companies making things like this. I think Snapchat even made a pair of glasses that could film things and do things like this. But Google was making what you could argue is a more complete product, again, over 10 years ago. And I'm going to try to lay out in this video why I think that is the right approach and that their biggest flaw the biggest fault in their plan was just being too early. So there are a lot of different options when it comes to what kind of a device you are going to try to make. There is AR and there is VR, right? You also have a standalone device versus a device that connects to your primary device like your phone. And I think that both of these questions are really important. Let's start with the AR versus VR distinction. And of course, a lot of headsets now, they'll call themselves XR because they can do VR and they can do AR. I've said these phrases a bunch of times, but basically this is the simplest way to think about it. When I'm playing walkabout mini golf on my MetaQuest 3 and I am fully transported to this world, all I can see is the, that world that I'm in as I am golfing. That is virtual reality. When I double tap on the side of my headset and suddenly I'm in pass through and I can see the world around me and I can manipulate these windows and move them around, that is augmented reality in a way. I'm looking at the world around me with floating windows. Google Glass is more augmented reality, whereas something like the MetaQuest or the Apple Vision Pro are more virtual reality with AR features. Now, I know we can argue about these terms in the comments down below, and I'm sure that we're going to, but let's just use these basic definitions to make distinctions. And when you're thinking about these two technologies, it's important to remember that they're both really good at specific things. VR is great at fully transporting you to another place, but there are downsides to virtual reality. It is a very isolating experience. When you are in that world, no one else can see it but you. Yeah, I can cast it to a TV, but it's just not the same. There are times that I'm doing something in VR and I want to show my wife and I have to get her to come in the room and I have to stop and cast it to the TV and it doesn't really look very good because she's not really seeing what I'm seeing because it just doesn't really work correctly. It is an isolating experience and you can't see anyone around you, right? Like if you are truly in VR, you are alone unless you're in VR with another person who's there with you, but that's not quite what I mean. You're not going to walk around all day wearing a VR headset. They are large, they are cumbersome, any more than an hour, hour and a half, and it starts to get really quite uncomfortable. It's just not tenable. Even if you do use the cameras for pass-through, it's just not as good as seeing the world around you with your eyes. Now, on the flip side, AR is very limited, right? Like, all you're really going to be getting are things floating around in front of you, but you're looking at the real world. In theory, you're looking through a set of lenses, and in those lenses, in some form or fashion, you are seeing floating things or whatever it might be, or a heads-up display like you had 
with Google Glass. Now, that is a technology that a normal person could potentially just wear all the time. And I think that that is where the usefulness actually is. For me, VR has never become anything more than an every once in a while type thing. I'll put my headset on for 30 minutes or so. I'll get some boxing in and then I'm done and I put it away, right? It's just not this transformative device that changes the way that I go about my day to day. I would never want to wear a VR headset to work in, to edit a video or whatever it might be. I'm just going to use my computer. But a pair of smart glasses that looked good, that maybe had my prescription in it, that also have the ability as I'm walking my dog to have a little video playing in my periphery or to show me my notifications or give me directions, whatever it might be, that actually is something that stays out of my way when I don't need it, but steps in to help me when I do, much the same way as a set of earbuds or a smartwatch would. And I think that is the right way to think about this technology. Rather than it being my primary device, it needs to be the secondary device like a smartwatch. And that is exactly what Google was doing with Google Glass. The problem was it was over 10 years ago and to do it, it was extremely expensive and limited in some important ways. But the concept and the idea, I think, was the right one. Just think about it. Think about the first VR headsets that were coming around versus where we are now with the Quest 3, the Quest Pro, the Apple Vision Pro. What is the thing that they've all moved towards? It's towards high quality pass through. Why do you think that is? Because it's extremely important if you intend to wear the thing all the time. You have to be able to see the world around you for a million different reasons. So rather than wearing this big, heavy thing on your face that gets hot and you're seeing the world through a set of cameras, why not wear something that's lightweight, that doesn't obstruct your vision, that only shows you what you need to see, and the hot, heavy part is just your phone. Your phone is driving the thing to some degree. I don't know how this doesn't just make way more sense to everybody. Maybe I'm just crazy, but this seems so obvious to me. Let VR headsets be VR headsets and let them be great at exactly that. But let's stop expecting people to wear them all day long throughout the day to work with them on. This just seems insane to me until the technology is incredibly thin and light and the pass through is indistinguishable from my normal vision. I just can't imagine that being a thing. But then you still have the other problem of your eyes being covered up. That's that isolation which goes both directions. Not only am I isolated from you because I'm seeing things you can't see, you can't see my eyes. And for human interaction, it's very important. And we've seen Apple with the Vision Pro, they put the screen on the front. But guys, you can't convince me that this does not look absolutely ridiculous. Give me a lightweight set of glasses that maybe you have to charge overnight, but that's fine because I don't actually wear my glasses when I'm sleeping. Let me put my prescription lenses in there and have this thing truly do what Google Glass was trying to do. Be the smartwatch for my face and my eyes, and I think that is a product that can absolutely win. And... It appears as though Google is going to try to do exactly that. Android XR, the Gemini era, comes to headsets and glasses. Now, I already made a video where I showed off the UI for Android XR in a standard headset. I'll put a link to that video in the description. But they talk about other things as well, like XR glasses. And the time is really now for this stuff because they've got stuff like Project Astro, which is coming. It's multimodal. So that camera is going to be able to look around the world in front of you and really understand what you're looking at and potentially be able to help you in ways that you've just not really thought about before. They've demoed this stuff on stage where they're walking around and maybe it was a demo, maybe it was sort of a, a canned demo. They claim that a lot of it was real, but they're walking around and they're asking questions about what the glasses are looking at and it's able to answer them. It's very, very impressive. And some people in the press have actually gotten to try out these prototypes. And as you can see here, I felt as close to Tony Stark 
in a controlled demo as I'll ever be. It seems like most people felt pretty positive about this stuff, so it looks like it's coming. I'll put a link to this article down below, but it's just really, really interesting. Just read this first bit with me. It's an ordinary Tuesday, and wearing what looked like ordinary glasses in a room surrounded by Google and Samsung representatives, one of them steps out in front of me and starts speaking in Spanish. I don't speak Spanish. Hovering mid-air, I can see her words being translated into English subtitles. Reading them, I can see she's describing what I'm seeing in real time. That is just the tip of the iceberg with what this technology is going to be able to do. I'll say it again. Google had this idea before the tech was here, both hardware and software. The price was going to be too high. But now, more than a decade later, with Gemini here, with AI here to be able to do crazy stuff like this, Things are about to get really, really interesting. But as always, I want to hear what you think in the comments down below. I'm sure some of you will disagree with me every step of the way, and that's fine. Just tell me where you think I went wrong in the comments down below. If you think that I'm dead on, hit that like button. Maybe subscribe before you go, guys. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends. <laughs>